Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's edition of Takedown. Well, two weeks ago, he was a world team long shot. Today, Thomas Gilman is one of the most talked about athletes on the senior circuit. The three-time All-American put together a near-perfect performance at the trials, topping three NCAA champions and then sweeping his former teammate in the 57-kilo finals. In this Takedown Radio exclusive, here's Thomas Gilman on his journey to the world championships been kind of a, a crazy ride um like you said i was at the open i was kind of you know getting really antsy there because i really want to wrestle later but um i was a little banged up um and the best best decision was not to wrestle and uh, as far as um transitioning from folk style to freestyle um i was a little rusty there at the at the last chance qualifier got thrown in my back a couple times and a couple matches but um tom and terry always say it's just wrestling's wrestling and and anyone that's ever wrestled folk style, freestyle, or even Greco knows that if you go out there and just wrestle, you know everything else will take care of itself. So, um, yeah, I just went out there and wrestled and uh, competed as hard as I could, and I knew the results would take care of themselves. Um, every match that whole day kind of had a little incentive for me, especially starting out um, right off the bat with Cruz. You know, he, that was my only loss this season in the NCAA. So, um, you know, that was a a little more incentive than obviously with Megalutis too in the in the semis of the main tournament. You know, I've never beaten him. Uh, he's beaten me in freestyle and folk style. So um, that was a really big match for me. And then obviously Tomasello as well. You know, he's only beaten me one time, so keeping my thumb on top of a guy like that. And then, you know, Ramos, teammate of mine, a little, a little bit of animosity between us, but no hard feelings. And I just wanted to go out there and, and prove that the Hawks were – are the best at, at uh, the lowest weight, and I did that. Right after the Nationals, I was obviously dealing with some demons, and I wanted to get back on the mat as soon as possible and, and get to the Open and and just just wrestle. You know, But I think at that time, that place, I was wrestling for the wrong reasons. I was wrestling to maybe redeem myself or, or whatever, right the wrong, but um, after some time off and, and some clarity, um, I feel better about where I'm at right now as far as my wrestling. I'm wrestling for the for the right reasons again. And um, obviously, I'd rather be a world team member than an NCAA champion. But but I'd rather have both too. You know, uh, being an NCAA champion is an amazing accomplishment that um, not a lot of guys do. But also, so is being a world team member. Moving on to Ramos, I, I heard in his interview after uh, the match that <clears throat> Tom and Terry had a good game plan for you to that uh, you go in with underhooks and, and slow him down a little bit. Was that the game plan for you, or is that just a feel for you know how you've wrestled him in the past? Absolutely not. I, I think he's he's full of himself saying that we had a, a game plan going into that match because uh, I, I've, I've never had a game plan in my entire life. I just go out there and wrestle hard. Um, the, the fact that he says I was slowing him down, I don't know if he was in the match or not, but that was a pretty high-paced match. I mean, I was digging underhooks the whole tournament and even at the last chance qualifier I was digging under hooks so I don't think that's any different um between the Ramos match and the other match um in the practice room I you know I wrestled him a lot we were te teammates and I know he's kind of vulnerable there um with those push outs I mean when he's getting ready for the world championships those two years uh we worked there a lot um him not getting pushed out uh by a guy like Rahimi so I knew he I could push him around the mat with an underhook and um, but it wasn't a game plan. I mean, I, I was doing that to everybody that day and uh, this freestyle season. It's not very often we step outside the walls of wrestling, but if anybody understands the life of an elite combat athlete, it's Evander Holyfield. In honor of his recent induction into the International Boxing Hall of Fame, we talked with The Real Deal about his career, his connection to wrestling, and the upcoming mega match between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. You know, success starts at home and failure starts at home. It's all depending on what the parents are teaching. Mm. And my, you know, my mom, my mom was always telling me, "Son, your good at a good attitude will carry a lot further than your talent." And, and you know, of course, you know, as a kid, I really didn't believe it, but I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, like this, and and and, and I know because she said everybody make mistakes. I said, everybody make mistakes. She said, but good attitude gives you more chances. So, you know, I you know, I found out that to be true. 
And all of a sudden, I, you know, the attitude got, got me. I had more chances than everybody. Everybody said, how did you do this? And I said, I had more chances since I had a good attitude. You know, I worked and I did everything I do, but in the point of doing the work, you still sometimes mess up. But if you mess up, they got an opportunity to get you out of there. But you got a good attitude, they'll give you another chance. And I see I got enough, I got enough chances to be able to make it. <laughs> Evander, have you ever uh, you thrown on the wrestling shoes before? Have you ever got down on a mat? Oh, yeah, I did that. I found out <laughs> that, you know what, shoes are a different skill. You know, I, you know, um, I did that, and, you know, because they look easy. And, you know, because, you know, and, 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 you know, I'm a fighter. Man, but uh, uh, what that little short period of time that you can't clinch, uh, you can't hold, you can't, you can't, you can't put both your hands together. And I did, they, they started taking points out of me. You know, the gal was And I, I, I lost, I, I, I lost my first, my first match in that. Not because I, not because I went strong, because I, I flipped the guy and turned him all kinds of way, but somehow, wherever I get him in, he, he reversed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got, I just want to get, uh, Evander's take on this Conor McGregor. Okay, right. Floyd Mayweather fight. How bad is this going to be for, uh, for Conor? Well, I mean, you know what, you know, you know, you, you can't take that away from athletes, or, you know, whether they're a boxer or MMA, but, because they boxing, and you know, it, you know, you know, I'm the only thing that I, I realized that he probably could do. I'm telling you, he's a guy that, you know, I think MMA take more punishment than anybody in the world, and I realized that he probably be able to take these shots, but he gonna take a, but you know, as the only way, I know it's a way he can win, and because you know, and because you know, it is the way he win. If he make the fight real ugly, he probably could win the fight. All right, stay tuned. We'll catch up with the women's world team after this short commercial break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey's General Stores, Casey's famous for pizza. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow-blue LED lighting, and you should too. After capturing her first world medal in 2016, Allie Reagan plans on taking the U.S. all the way to the top of the podium in Paris. Reagan and her teammates just finished their first training camp of the international season and talked with USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott about their goals and preparing for the world championships. How are things going with you this summer? Um, things are really good. I mean, we had a great first training camp, so I think we're all pumped and excited to get the show rolling. Um, so, I mean, we're all about a team this year. So, supporting everyone and really like communicating and stuff like that, like that's how we're going to take it to the next level. That's how we're going to become team world champions, individual world champions, because we need each other to make that goal happen. Hey, coming off a world silver medal, which amazing achievement but not what you wanted uh, what kind of things will it take to get to that next rung uh, things that you think that are in your control that, that you're going to have ready for paris i'm um, definitely creating more angles and setting up my shots and getting to my ties 
um, within the first, right from the whistle starting. So really making that presence um, that I'm on the mat and I'm going to push the pace and I'm going to control the entire match. So I think that um, if I come on the mat and do that, then hopefully gold's in my future. <laughs> young team, four first timers. Okay? Yeah. You're one of the leaders. You're one of the young people going in for the first time. Is that going to help the U.S. team? I mean, having uh, a group of young athletes that have been through the age group programs and are ready to take on the world? I think it's going to make a different the difference for sure. I mean, a lot of uh, the the cadet development program didn't start until I was a cadet. Like the year before, I made the first team, my first team was their first year. So I think that now that we're getting that age group of girls onto our senior world teams, it's going to reflect. It's going to show like we have the experience. The girls have had matches, even the ones who are first-time team members. Like they've had the international experience. They've been through the development program. They know the nutrition and the elite side of it already. So I think it's going to be really good. It with Mallory Velty. You just finished the full day of uh, wrestling here at the Women's Senior World Training Camp. Five matches today. Uh, yeah. How'd you do? How, how did it work for you? Obviously, this um, is an important time. Yeah, it's a long camp. It's been pretty grueling, so I think everyone was just trying to push like, and kind of like accept where, where we are today and, and try to wrestle as best we can in the conditions. This is your first world championship, right? Yes, Talk sir. about what it means for you to, to do well and, and how well you expect to do. Well, it means a lot to me. Now, I, I'm hoping to go out there and get gold only because I, I didn't get a chance to represent our country for the Olympics. I won Olympic trials, but I didn't get to represent our country, and that's been my ultimate dream on top of getting gold. So it, it definitely means a lot to me, and I want to give it my all. Now, Terry says that I can do it. I believe that I can do it. We'll see what God has in store for me. I'm ready to go. I'm just going to go on his path and hope for the best, but of course I'm hoping for gold. You've been wrestling full-time freestyle since you finished college. Uh, do you feel improvement in, in uh, your areas that are important and do oh. you think you're going to be able to show that in Paris? Most definitely. I mean, I'm only improving from here, but I've definitely improved. I've seen a huge improvement since my college career. You know, just a lot more confidence, much better flowing, techniques cleaning up already, so it's only going up from here. With National Coach Terry Steiner, our first full preparation training camp for a women's world team, going to compete this uh, August in, in Paris. Uh, full day today, live matches. Uh, what did you see, Coach, and why was it important for the girls to go out there and, and go a full hard day of live wrestling? Well, I think, I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're getting ready for, right, is those competition days. So, you know, somewhere during camp, usually we do have a day that we, we have, like, kind of like a mock tournament where we're trying to get them in that feeling of you know it's one thing being in that training to train but we're, we got to train to compete right and so just not losing that competitive feeling right so so we want them to feel that we want them to have their singlet on we want them to have you know uh, use the whole mat you know um, you know have the time situation so they get, keep getting used to that the time frame of everything but but uh, you know, really just to test themselves. I mean, we've worked on a lot of different areas during camp, and, and I wanna, want them to go out there and be able to test themselves and give them, themselves an honest look at where they're at. Do you feel comfortable that our team can battle for a team trophy in France? I mean, obviously, individual medals, you're gonna fight for every one of those as a group, but... You know what, I, I, I think we can, but we're gonna focus on our process right now. We're gonna focus on the, being the best wrestlers that we can be and, and, and we'll leave it at that and we'll see where it takes us but obviously I mean, if we make a U.S. team we've said it for years if we make a U.S. team we there's an, a certain expectation that goes along with that right and, and, uh, and if you've battled through and made a U.S. team we expect that we're ready to step on that award stand and, and be a medalist at the world championship so so yeah there's an expectation there but uh, I think how we get there uh, we're going to focus on ourselves and, and really uh, try to get down to the nuts and bolts of, you know, and cleaning things up that we need to do. And if we do that, uh, we'll, we'll get what we want. What's it like to coach your son? We'll take you inside the Smith family dynasty after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Max. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza.
Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, check them out. Pureandcleansports.com. From the Brands Brothers to the Bannocks, wrestling has seen its share of legacies, but none quite like the Smith family. From Doug Thompson of the Oklahoma State Athletic Department, let's take a closer look at the relationship and life of Cowboy coach John Smith and his son. The legend of Oklahoma State wrestling coach John Smith is among the greatest in the history of sports. He won two NCAA championships while at OSU and two Olympic gold medals in 1988 in 1992. That same year, Smith returned to his alma mater as the wrestling coach. Now in his 26th season, Smith is training the next generation of world champion wrestlers, one of which happens to be his very own son, Joe Smith. Coaching your son brings an entirely new dynamic to the wrestling room and has challenged Smith with attempting to treat his son like any other competitor. It is still a phenomenon Smith is not quite accustomed to. Um. You tend to want to push a little bit harder. You tend to judge him a little bit differently. Uh, winning and losing is a little bit different with me and him. Um, where I might support some kid that, that got beat in an ugly match and build him up, uh, I might be kicking Joe in the tail, you know. Um, those are the things that I got to continue to balance out. Last year, Joe finished with a 34 and five record and was named an All-American. He had the rare opportunity to compete as a true freshman, something his father doesn't traditionally do. Remember he was a young last year, started as a true freshman. Um, I haven't done that very often. Um, I'd have liked to have avoided it last year, but I, I really had no choice. Um, I thought we had a chance to win. We did. Uh, Joe wrestles at the 157 pound weight class. Last season at the NCAA championships, he was disappointed with his seventh place finish. Now in his second year, he is confident in his ability to contend for the title. I think I'm the best. Uh, I do think I'm the best. Um, I know I can be the best, but uh, it all matters uh, how you perform on the mat and uh, when it counts, and that's when it comes down to. Joe's relationship with his father is complex, to say the very least. Both grew up on a mat much like this one right here inside gallagher Iba Arena. Here in the wrestling room, John is Joe's coach. But when they go home each night, John is simply a dad who wants the best for his son, something Joe has always cherished. When I'm out of the wrestling room, uh, he's my dad. And uh, we have that father-son relationship. Um, it's a really good relationship. Uh, but in the wrestling room, uh, it's like nobody else in there. Um, he's my coach just like everybody else. The two fierce competitors share an unrivaled bond. This is a father-son duo like no other. For the rest of their lives, they will always have something that brings them together and unites them. Joe has overcome a lot to be a collegiate wrestler at Oklahoma State. It's impossible to reach the kind of success without facing some sort of challenges along the way. But no matter what, 
his dad will always be proud of him. I know that he works hard. He doesn't need me in his corner. Um, I think I need to be there, but in the end, um, I'm proud of him, and, and he's had a lot of challenges, some things to overcome, um, both on the mat and off, and just like to see him grow, and, and I've seen him grow into a, an adult, and that's, that's as exciting as anything. Only a sophomore, Joe has his whole career ahead of him. After completing his eligibility at OSU, he wants to compete on the world stage and fulfill his dream of winning a gold medal, just like his father before him. For the Poke Report, I'm Doug Thompson. Joseph Smith. Our coverage continues after the short commercial timeout. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Coca-Cola. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. After making his first U.S. World Team, Don Bradley joined us in the Takedown Studios last Saturday to talk about his progress and renewed passion for the sport. You know, I, I, I beat a, you know, I beat a lot of tough dudes. You know, I beat Bobby Telford. Um, he's big, strong. You know, your typical Iowa heavyweight, really good at hand fighting. And uh, you know, I got some history with him. And you know, every single time it's been some battles, and I kind of, kind of opened it up a little bit. Five one, you know, five one heavyweight matches almost like a major, um, close to the tech. So that was pretty big. And then, uh, you know, I wrestled in the, in the finals of the mini tournament, wrestled Tony Nelson, and I actually took that guy down twice. I even I even hit a left-hand high crotch. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't think I can shoot a lot. Um, you know, but that's big. I just took down a, a two-time national champ, three-time finalist, four-time All-American. I mean, you know, you wrestle two guys like that, Big Ten Conference. Everybody knows Big Ten's tough, and those guys know how to hand fight. And they, 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 they wear you out. And, you know, the first match against Wiz, you know, I mean, he got me pretty good. You know, I was a little nervous. But it was cool, you know. Then wrestle the second match, you know. Um, personally, I don't think I gave up one with uh, three seconds left. But, um, you know, you, you can't change it. You know, I pushed that dude to the brink. Um, every time we do wrestle, it's fun. Um, I think it's great to wrestle somebody like that. Um, he'll, he'll actually wrestle and shoot. Where I'm at in my career, I need to, you know, maybe think about coaching in the future. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, the, the people that have called me this week has been crazy. I've had Olympic champs, uh, world champs, uh, big time programs call me, you know. Um, Kim Cross called me a couple nights ago, just wants me to come check out the New York RTC. You know, I talked to Coach Reeder and Coach Bono a little bit. Um, I was actually up at North Dakota State checking out with Coach Kish and, uh, Coach Garnett, um, that was pretty nice up there. Um, you know, Tom Brands called me. I mean, I don't know if that's a possibility, but um, even just going up there and training, you know, me and Telford go at it. So uh, it might not work out, but maybe I can go up there for a couple workouts. I mean, especially that Mark Perry's there now. I mean, that guy's a great mind in wrestling. Um, you know, Northwestern's called me. Um, 
haven't called him back yet. I've been a little busy traveling, doing some camps. Uh, Michigan, I'm going to check out Michigan next week. Um, you know, they have Adam Kuhn. He's, he's a beast, so I can probably work out with him. And uh, Nebraska, you know, I called Coach Manning. I saw they had an opening on the volunteer position. So I, I, I really hope that kind of works out too. Um, you know, being around people like James Green and Jordan Burroughs and, you know, Coach Schneider, all the people they have there. I mean, how can you not get better? Um, I like to think of myself as a sponge. I'm always learning ways to get better. Shout out to Don Bradley, Thomas Gilman, and Evander Holyfield, all our friends at USA Wrestling and the Oklahoma State Athletic Department. For more wrestling news, interviews, weekly prizes, and the longest-running radio show in the sport, look for us online at TakedownWrestle.com. For all of us in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for another edition of Takedown.